In this section, we'll talk about combinations of random variables. So we often want to add two variables or maybe multiply a variable by 10 or something like that. Let me show you why. So in games, we often roll a six-sided dice. So I found the probability distribution and expected value and variance for a fair six-sided die. So on a six-sided die, you have the possibilities from one to six. They're all equally likely. So each probability would be one-sixth or 0.166. And you can see I graphed it. So x equals one, two, three, four, five, six they all have the same probability of 0.166. It's a pretty boring distribution, isn't it? My expected value is 3.5 and the variance is 2.917. So that's just if I roll one die. But there are times you might want to multiply each die result by something. So for example, to get a score out of 100, some people multiply a 10-sided dice by 10. In this case, we want to multiply each die result by 3. And let's look and see what that does for us. So I took each old x value. So for each old x value, I just times it by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12, etc. The probabilities stay the same because we didn't do anything to them. All we did was change the x values, which is times each x value by 3. You can see my probability distribution changes quite a bit, right? Instead of having the numbers 1 through 6, our numbers now range from 3 to 18. This seems like it's a lot more spread out, isn't it? Well, it turns out our expected value is 10.5 now. So our expected value, our average got a lot higher, which makes sense because we multiplied everything by 3. Our variance is also going to be a lot higher. We went from 2.9 to 26. Because again, look at how much more our data is spread out. So our variance should be higher. So we have a new expected value and a new variance. Let's see if we can figure out how they got those. So the expected value of 3 times x. I bet this would just be 3 times the expected value of x. Let's see. So 3 times the old expected value of 3.5 does give me 10.5. So that worked. So that makes sense, right? If you're going to multiply everything by 3, then your average is just multiplied by 3 as well. The variance, though, is harder to figure out what they were doing. So the variance of 3 times x. If I just pull out 3 times the variance of x, that would be 3 times 2.917. That gives me about 7 or so. Actually, I guess that would be a little bit closer to 9. That's not equal to 26, so that's wrong. What if we try 3 squared instead? If I try 3 squared, then I do get 26.253. So when we have a number 3 times x and we want to pull it out of the variance, we actually pull it out squared. And the reason why is if you go back and look at the original formula for variance, here I'll write formula for variance here. Variance of x was the sum of each x minus the mean squared times the probability. And so we did that for each one. So every time you have a 3 times x inside the sum, it's going to get squared. So that's why the 3 squared has to come out, or the 3 has to come out squared. So the 3 in the expected value just comes out. 3 in variance has to come out squared. And again, it makes sense that our variance is bigger because this distribution looks like it's a lot more spread out. Okay. So we figure out what happens if we multiply each value. What if we want to add 5 to each die result? So I took the numbers 1 through 6. So if this was x, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. If I add 5 to each of those, then I get 1 plus 5 is 6, 2 plus 5 is 7, etc. The probabilities are still the same. And here is my graph. Let's zoom out and see what our original graph looked like. Okay, compare those two graphs. Those two graphs look like they are exactly the same except for what? It looks like the second one got shifted. So it is the same shape as x, but just shift it up. Okay. So if we just shifted it up, I would think the expected value or average should be higher. Now how much higher do you think? If we moved everything up 5, I would guess the average should probably be higher by 5. But what about the variance? Because the shape stayed the same, the variance should be the same. So let's look at it and see. So expected value of x plus 5 would be equal to 
I'm thinking I could just take the old average and add five. So let's see if that works. So my old average is 3.5 plus five gives me 8.5. So that worked. For the variance of x plus five, notice 2.917, 2.917, that's exactly the same. So this is just equal to the variance of x plus zero. So when you add a number inside the variance, it just comes out as a zero. It doesn't matter because all you're doing is shifting it. The reason why, again, as you look at this formula is we did x plus five, but the average is also average plus five and those plus five minus plus fives cancel. So when you have a number, a plus a number inside a variance, it just comes out as zero. When you multiply inside the variance, it comes out squared. So that's just a little introduction to it. Now let's look at our actual rules for means and variances. So if x is a random variable and a and b are fixed numbers, that means just constants, actual numbers, then the expected value of a times x plus b, well the a comes out, multiplies the expected value of x, and then you just do plus b. And if you have two different random variables, which we didn't do yet, expected value of x plus y would just be expected value of x plus expected value of y. Okay, pretty simple for means. The variance is, is where you have to pay attention. So again, x is a random variable, a and b are fixed numbers. The variance of a times x plus b. The a times x comes out squared, just like we saw above, but the plus b part is really like it's just plus zero. It doesn't affect it because all you did was take the exact same shape and just shift it up so it doesn't change the variance. And of course, we don't usually bother writing plus zero. Let's see, and if x and y are independent random variables, then the variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y. So you just add each of the variances. Now, to find the standard deviation, lots of times we start with standard deviation, but our rules only work for variance. These rules will break down, especially this rule will break down if you try and do standard deviations instead. So you have to do everything in variance and then take the square root to get the standard deviation. So let's try it. In previous examples, we found the values for Linda's car and truck sales. Our expected value of cars is 1.1, expected value of trucks is 0.7, variance of cars is 0.89, variance of trucks is 0.41. If she earns 250 per car and $300 per truck she sells, plus a base of $500 per week, find her expected total earnings. And what does this mean? First, I would write a formula to how I find her total money. Well, it would be 250 times the number of cars plus $300 times the number of trucks plus just her base of 500. Okay. So that's our formula to get our total. Okay. Now, let's find the expected total or the average per week. So the expected of the total is the expected value of 250 times C plus 300 times T plus 500. So let's remember all of our rules. That 250 just comes out. Expected value is always super easy. 250 times expected value of C plus 300 times expected value of T plus 500. So this will be 250 times 1.1. That was our expected value for C plus 300 times the expected of t, which is 0.7, plus 500, which gives me 985. So it will, of course, vary from week to week, but on average, she'll make a total of 985 a week. We might also want to know something like the standard deviation. But again, we're going to start with variance. So variance of the total is equal to the variance of this 250 times C plus 300 times T plus 500. So what has to happen? The 250 comes out, but it has to come out squared. When you come out of variance, you come out squared times the variance of C plus 300 that has to come out but it has to come out squared times the variance of T 
and this plus 500, does that matter? All that does is just shift my whole distribution up 500. It doesn't change my variance at all. So that's just gone. So we have 250 squared times the variance of C, which is 0.89, plus 300 squared times the variance of T of 0.41, which gives 92,525. That's the variance. Now, if you want the standard deviation, okay, and for some reason we don't write SD of total, it's just not a tradition. So we'll just do the little sign for sigma. It's just going to be the square root of our variance. So $304.17. That's the standard deviation. So that kind of give, tells you how much she'll change from week to week. It's a way to measure how much she'll change from week to week. Let's try some more. The factory manager has figured out that the average number of equipment breakdowns per day is 0.25. The standard deviation is 0.536. So we have the expected value of, I wrote x out of habit, but let's make that a b for breakdowns. And it didn't tell me the variance, it told me the standard deviation of b is 0.536. I do know that I'll need variance for my formula, so let's go ahead and change that to a variance. So the variance of B is going to be 0.536 squared. I probably won't even put this in my calculator yet. I'll save it for later and just write as 0.536 squared. Okay, he estimates that each breakdown costs $500 in repairs and production costs. And we want to know like expected cost for breakdowns, variance, for co variance of cost for breakdowns. So let's change the number of breakdowns to our cost for breakdowns. So the cost is going to be... 500 times the number of breakdowns. Or if I want to do it in symbols, I'll say that my cost equals 500 times B. So what's our expected value? The expected value for cost is the expected value of 500 times B. And for expected value, it's just simple, so just 500 times the old expected value. So 500 times the average of 0.25 gives me 125. So on average, he'll, it'll cost him about $125 per week for breakdowns. Oh, sorry, per day, not per week. Now for variance, we'll do the same thing. So variance for cost will be the variance of... 500 times B, but that 500, when it comes out, it has to come out squared. So 500 times the variance of B. So this will be 500 squared times the variance, which we said is 0.536 squared. Sorry, I just realized I was writing outside of the video area. So there you can kind of see what I've been writing now. <laughs> this gives me... Seventy-one thousand eight hundred and twenty-four as the variance. So the standard deviation for the cost will just be the square root of that, which is two hundred and sixty-eight. So that seems like a pretty high standard deviation. It's telling me there's a lot of variation per day in the number of breakdowns, or sorry, in the cost of breakdowns. Let's see, he believes the base cost to run the machines is $200 a day. So let's write a formula for the total cost per day, including the base cost and breakdowns. So the total is going to be that 200 plus 500. So 200 is just every day costs that much, plus 500 times the number of breakdowns. Or let's abbreviate that as T equals 200 plus 500 times B. So what's our expected value of the total cost? The, the expected value of our total is the expected value of 200 plus 500 times B. So this will just, 
the plus 200 part just comes out, so 200 plus, and now 500, comes out 500 times the expected value of the breakdown. So 200 plus 500 times the expected value for breakdowns, which is 0.25. Three hundred and twenty-five. So on average, it will cost the total cost will be three hundred and twenty-five dollars a day to run the machines. For our standard deviation, you first have to find variance. So variance of total is the variance of this two hundred plus five hundred times b. So that two hundred, the plus two hundred. Remember that just shifted everything up by two hundred. It doesn't change the shape at all. So it actually just kind of comes out as a zero. It doesn't do anything. But the 500 is going to come out squared. So 500 squared times the variance of B. And I think we actually did that calculation up above right here. So we got 71,824, which means then the standard deviation of T is going to be equal to the square root of 71,824, which again is 268.